Hey, welcome back. This is Business 163, Personal Finance, and we are now in module number seven. And this module deals with the topic of saving and a little bit about banking options in order for us to save. And so uh, we want to welcome you to the module, and we hope that this continues to add uh, some great tools and understanding and concepts in your arsenal, so to speak, as we have now worked through building a budget. And now we are really uh, asking ourselves, okay, now that we have a plan in place, how do we go about with this whole topic of saving? Why is it necessary? What does it accomplish? How do we do it? And quite frankly, how do we make saving a little easier than many times it is for all of us, quite frankly? All right. So in this very first short little video lecture, we want to talk about the topic of savings fundamentals, some basic fundamentals. So we're all on the same page as we get started in this module talking about savings. And a couple of things I want to introduce to you, uh, just a couple of quotes here. Um, there are two ways to be rich. One is to have great wealth <laughs> and the other is to have few wants. Well, um, very few of us in this class probably have started with great wealth and we are challenged. We are dealing with the fact that we don't quite have only a few wants. And maybe that's why uh, preparing a budget has been interesting for us. Maybe that's why we're taking this class is because we really aren't. Uh, we don't have few wants and therefore, well, then how do we tackle this thing? If we don't start with great wealth and we have more than a few wants, well, there is an old Chinese proverb, do not wait until you are thirsty to dig a well. And, and that obviously digging a well takes a while to have that completed. You want to start now, not when you run into trouble. And so as we begin thinking about the whole topic of savings, one of the things we want to talk about then, you can see in this next slide, do we really need savings? Do we really have to have a savings account? And we would argue that each of us needs savings in this modern contemporary financial life. Why is that? Because life has unexpected surprises. And more times than not, those surprises have price tags attached to them. You know what I'm talking about? Like this photo in this slide. Some surprises are not pleasant surprises. The car stops running. There's water leaking from the ceiling. There are, well, just all countless types of emergencies that we will run into, surprises that are unexpected and have price tags attached to them. And quite frankly, some of the goals that we want to set for ourselves, what we want our future life to look like, you know what? We'll never be able to reach some goals unless we begin saving for them now. There is an old principle we talk about in finance, money never sleeps. Money is always working. The only question is, is it working for you or working against you? Now, really what that principle is talking about is how does money work for us? Well, remember money in savings or money in interest bearing accounts earns interest 24 hours a day, right? Whether you're sleeping, whether you're binge watching Netflix, whether you're out having a, a coffee with a friend, your money in savings or interest bearing accounts is always still earning interest and therefore working for you. Ah, but the other half of this, of course, is money that you owe, for instance, to credit card debt, right? Well, that continues to accrue interest for the lender, whether you're asleep, whether you're binge watching Netflix, no matter what you're doing, that money is always working against you. You get the point. Money never sleeps. The only question is, is it working for you or against you? That's a reason why we need savings. As we keep going here, just a quick word here. We haven't reached in this class yet the module on investing, but it does really uh, just bear out some fruit to have one slide to talk about, well, what's the really the fundamental difference between saving versus investing? And generally, as we talk about it in personal finance, saving is, savings is what we're talking about when we're talking about generally a shorter term focus, a year 
or less to meet those kinds of goals, right? And generally, if we're going to be using that money within 12 months, safety is our primary goal and liquidity is probably our second goal. What is liquidity? Easy, quick, penalty-free access to that money. Can we get to it when we need it? When we need it to, for instance, uh, spend on that goal we've been saving for or Perhaps do we, can we have access to it for those emergencies that happen for the unexpected? And that's a little different than, as you can see in the purple, this whole idea of investing. Investing typically has a longer term focus, money that you may not need for a week or a month or several years, right? And so therefore the goal of our investment accounts is to earn a return over time. That is our primary goal and quite frankly, Keep in mind, we'll, we'll talk more about this when we get to the module on investing, but we can even say it now, the return we earn our in, on our investments needs to outpace the increase in the cost of living that we suffer in this modern world, also sometimes known as technically as inflation, right? Our investments need to outpace that. Otherwise, uh, the cost of living is, is surpassing the money, the return that we're getting on our investments. And so we always want to be mindful of that. More on that in a future module when we talk about that topic uh, in greater focus. All right, but nevertheless, that's really the difference, at least for today's module, the difference between what we're talking about today in this module in savings versus our later discussion that we'll have on investments. All right. Now, in this module, we're going to look at... Uh, a couple of different topics. We're going to, have to look at the topic of emergency funds, why we need them. Uh, uh, what type of a bank account should I really use for my savings? We're going to discuss several of the options that are out there. We're going to talk about sort of the behavioral finance reason why saving is hard for all of us. Why saving, savings uh, is, can, is typically a difficult thing for us to really do and accomplish on a continual basis. And also at the end here, we'll give you some strategies to make saving a little easier and maybe a lot easier for each one of us. All righty. So where we begin is let's begin by chatting about uh, setting some goals. You'll need to set some savings goals for yourself. And some of the common goals that many of us share, uh, first of all, is to have a rainy day fund, or also known as an emergency fund, right? And that's one goal that I think every single one of us needs to have. Uh, and in addition, many of us will have other goals, like we want future purchases that we have to plan for. We want someday to have another car, a different car than we're driving right now whether that's a new car, a used car, but we'll need another vehicle because cars don't last forever. We will need to plan for large purchases like living room furniture. Uh, we'll need to plan for large purchases like, for instance, an international vacation, right? You'll need to plan for your future retirement, or sometimes as we like to refer to it, rather than using the term retirement, to talk about simply achieving a level of financial independence. Maybe that's a little more of a descriptive or exemplary term that you can remember when you're tempted to think about, well, your future retirement. If you can phrase it to yourself in terms of financial independence, that may be a much more specific and attractive way to conceptualize that. Um, you will probably, if you want to pay for your child's college education, you're going to need to plan for that now. And that's a, or another very worthy uh, goal to set for a reason to save. As well as perhaps someday you hope to own your own business. Well, that's going to require capital. It's going to require funds. And so that's yet another uh, goal that many of us set for ourselves if that's one of your aspirations. So it's a good thing to write those down and to be specific what are the goals you have that you want to save towards? That's where it starts. And then what we would probably re recommend to each one of us is for all the goals, that list of goals that you end up making, you're going to have to prioritize which is the most and the more important goals you want to accomplish first. My suggestion in this class is that your very first number one priority should be building your emergency fund. Everything else should fall uh, under that in priority. That should be number one. And quite frankly, you should make sure your needs are funded before you start saving for your child's college education. 
Certainly, I'm not minimizing that. I think saving for your child's college education is a worthy aspiration, but you should make sure your own financial house is taken care of first before you start doing that. And you should consider whether or not your goal increases in value over time or decreases. Remember that old um, credo we used to consider whether or not debt was a good debt or a bad debt? And we told you that the thing that really helps us to understand whether a debt is good or bad is what are we getting for that debt? And does that thing increase in value over the years? Like for instance, your own college education or perhaps um, an investment that earns a return over time, right? Or does it decrease in value, financial value over time, right? What do you have to show after your vacation has ended? Certainly you have some wonderful memories that may last you a lifetime, but the actual value of that is already economically spent, right? Or if you think about automobiles, generally speaking, your car depreciates over time. It loses value over time. It doesn't increase in value over time. And so when we think about the goals we have to save towards, does the thing we're getting from our savings increase in value or decrease over time? That should help you in the process of prioritizing your savings goals. I think by now at this point in the class, we all understand that saving is important and certainly having an emergency fund or a rainy day fund is absolutely mandatory for us in the kind of life we have here in our contemporary time. And so uh, we hope that this short little video kicks off the topic well in such a way, way that we can all get our arms around it as we begin to consider how do we go about building our savings, how, what are some techniques and tools we can use. So we're looking forward to all of this in this module number seven. We will see you in the next video.